So uh, I'm going to be re uh, previewing the Atlantic Division. Um, today is the opening day for the NBA, so I'm trying to get some of these done very quickly. Um, in the Atlantic Division, I am picking the Brooklyn Nets to win it. Uh, some of their additions, uh, people have made um, clear that they are good ones, but I don't. I am not sure um, about that yet. Uh, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce. Uh, not as good as they once were, so let's not hype this team as the next Eastern Conference champion just yet. I don't think they can compete with the Heat yet, so um, they still have that to look out for. But they will win this division, I think, very handily. They're, they just have a deeper roster than anyone, a more talented roster, and that's bolstered by Deron Williams, and if he can stay healthy, this team will be very good. Deron Williams is a very good point guard, and when you have a good, very good point guard, uh, most likely you have a very good team. Um, Joe Johnson and Paul Pierce are the wings. Um, Joe Johnson really needs to get back to his form in Atlanta. He didn't have as good of a season last year, um, and if he can really get back to what he once was and what they're paying him for, um, I think he uh, this team can be much better than I expect them to be. Uh, Paul Pierce, he's really fading. He's not what he once was. He's a, he's an aging player, so don't expect uh, great things from him. He'll be pretty average at best. Um, Kevin Garnett, I'm wondering how much he can actually play. He's a, uh, he's old. His knees, his back, everything is starting to um, kind of go wrong with him. He's kind of sputtering out. Um, so I'm wondering if he can really bolster this team um, like they think he can. Um, so I'm not I'm not sold on KG yet. Uh, Brooke Lopez, however, he is a very good center. He just also like Deron Williams needs to stay healthy, and this team can be very good with him. Uh, of course, they do have one of the best six men, and that's a very good addition. Uh, one that's overlooked, I think, is Jason Terry, and I think he really has a chance to be the sixth man of the year. Um, he's a very very good. Uh, guy to have coming off your bench and he will add a lot to this team and that's a big reason why I'm picking them to win. Uh, right behind them is their crosstown rival, the New York Knicks. Uh, I think Raymond Felton needs to have a bigger and better impact on the game at point guard, but they do have a very solid lineup uh, aside from him. They have uh, Shumpert uh, as shooting guard and I think he this is the year he finally steps up and kind of comes into his own. Um, then they have uh, Bargnani and Meta World Peace splitting time at small forward, and one's very, very defensive, one's very offensive. So I think that's very good uh, complementary weapons they have there. And I think Meta World Peace will surprise this year, and he'll go back to being his defensive self. And um, he's a great person to have on a team you want to take to the championship. Um, then, of course, they have Carmelo Anthony, and he's going to be the workhorse like he has been the last couple of years. Last year, we, he was especially spectacular, um, and I think he'll be he'll be there again. Um, and he just needs to stay healthy, stay on the court, and really step up as a leader, and, and I think he's, he's ready to do that. He wants to win a championship. And then, of course, Tyson Chandler. Uh, he's a very good center, very good defensively, um, just really, really good center to have. Right behind the Knicks, I have the Toronto Raptors. Um, I think this is this may be a surprise team, but I'm not sure they make the playoffs. Um, I think they could surprise and jump all the way to fifth, fourth, fifth seed. Um, but I also think they could disappoint a little and miss the playoffs. Uh, they have Kyle Lowry, and I think he really needs to step up and start scoring for them a little bit more. Um, same with Rudy Gay. I'm wondering if he can really be the number one guy. Um, many thought he could be in his past, uh, but obviously Memphis didn't think so. And uh, he's really like a B caliber player, um, and they Toronto needs him to be an A caliber player. Uh, they have a couple exciting shooting guards, uh, both the dunk contest extraordinaires. Um, DeMar DeRozan and Terrence Ross, uh, very exciting players, really give something uh, for the fans to look forward to in Toronto. Um, then down low they have Amir Johnson and Jonas Valanciunas. I'm sure I pronounced that name wrong. Um, I think Amir Johnson, he could have a breakout year this year, but uh, um, it's not it's not a for sure thing, you know. Uh, he hasn't really been a consistent player, so I'm wondering if he can step up. Um, and then for uh, Valanciunas, I think he uh, he can average a double-double, but he needs to grow into himself. 
Um, and then the bottom two teams in this division are are awful. Um, but the better of the two is the 76ers, uh, although there is some debate about it. Um, I really think the 76ers are just slightly better, and that has a lot to do with Evan Turner. And He is an excellent, excellent player, um, and it, it's a good thing the 76ers have something to build around. Um, they have Michael Carter-Williams at point guard, and I'm wondering how good he can be because um, they really need a guard to step up for the Sixers. Uh, James Anderson is their shooting guard, and he's really just an average player, so they really need a lot from Carter-Williams. Um, Thaddeus Young is down at par power forward. Uh, I think he's a little bit small to be playing that position, um, but that's what they have to work with. Um, Spencer Hawes is their center. I think he's a very underrated center. Um, obviously with Nerlens Noel uh, being drafted, and he'll be injured for the first uh, few weeks, but I, he looks like he's going to push Hawes for playing time, and I'm hoping they trade Hawes to somewhere that somebody can use him because um, he is a very good center. Uh, Tony Roten, another UW graduate, um, is the sixth man, and he's a little bit young, but I think he has the talent to be a good player. And then of course, the Celtics are last in the division. Um, just not a great lineup. They're they're really rebuilding, and Rondo's going to be hurt for the first couple weeks. Um, this is a team that's obviously looking towards that very strong draft class next year. Um, Avery Bradley is their point guard. Uh, he might be decent um, at best, so. Uh, I guess that's something to look forward to, Boston. Uh, decent point guard. Um, of course, you will have Rondo coming back, um, and Bradley will probably move to shooting guard. Uh, Jeff Green is their shooting guard on opening day. Uh, you can tell if Jeff Green is your shooting guard on opening day, you're doing a little bit of mix and match. Uh, you really don't have a lot of talent um, if Jeff Green is your shooting guard. He's more of a power forward, small forward type Um and it's kind of a little odd for him to be at shooting guard. Uh, Gerald Wallace is their small forward. He's a little bit weak um, at that position. He just hasn't lived up to what people have thought of him. Uh, Brandon Bass is their power forward. He's great defensively, but um, not what you want in your starting lineup. Uh, Kelly Olenek, uh, he was looked very good this preseason. Um, so he's kind of an interesting uh, development at center, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he does, but I don't think he's NBA-ready yet. Uh, and then their sixth man is really uh, not anybody, but it's kind of a trio of players. Uh, Courtney Lee, Jordan Crawford, Jared Solinger, all, all solid players. Um, just none of, them, none of them are really good enough to make a difference in Boston. Uh, that is it for the Atlantic Division. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Check out the blog. Uh, we like to put up some polls, um, kind of have you interact uh, with us, give, give your feedback. Um, and we'll be back with more division previews as soon as I can.